All right, as we wrap up our Homeless in Northern California series, tonight we introduce you to Jason Carney. He's a sergeant in the California National Guard, an activist, and for the next 30 days, he is doing something completely radical. He has chosen to be homeless. Every night, more than 3,000 people across Sacramento are homeless. Many of them veterans sleeping outside, braving the cold, the wind, the rain. That sad reality is something Jason Carney, an activist and sergeant in the California National Guard, is currently experiencing firsthand. I'm only doing it for the last seven, eight hours now. And let me tell you, when you don't know what's coming next, when you don't know where you're gonna sleep, when you don't know if it's safe and secure, it's not fair to have human beings live like that. Jason is 37, he has an apartment, a family, but for 30 days, he's decided to be homeless. He explained why in a video posted on a Facebook page for the group he founded, Vets for the 99%. The life of homeless people by being in that element for the next 30 days. And so began his month-long journey of being homeless, living on the street, documenting the stories of the homeless people he encounters along the way. We first caught up with Jason in Citrus Heights about one week into the experiment. Oh, sorry, my leg. <laughs> yeah, are you okay? So what happened to your leg? It's no easy endeavor. In that yeah, time, okay. he said he had okay. hurt his arm and sprained his ankle, walked a total of roughly 80 miles, slept outside in the rain, and eaten only a few meals. Seeing the, the traps of rain, cold, uh, slippery surfaces, different types of people you run into, lack of shelter, lack of food, things of that nature, it's kind of taken a toll on my body just in the first quarter of this. Right, you said to me when I first met you, you said, sorry, I'm usually a lot more jovial yes. than this. And I was like, it's okay, you've been sleeping outside for what, the past five, six nights? Yes, and uh, two of those nights were a lot of fun because it dropped down into the upper 30s and it rained like I haven't seen in a while. We walked over to the Advent Lutheran Church, where he was hoping their food bank might be open. Locked. Is there another food pantry you walk to? Uh, none that are open beyond about 4 o'clock, which is a problem for a lot of people because they have to travel a long distance from point A to point B just to get to these food banks. Out of options for food, Jason then began a four-mile walk to the park where he planned to sleep that night. It's getting cold. Uh-huh. Cold? <laughs> Not yet. As it grew dark, we stopped so we could do a Facebook Live update about his day. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? It's me. I promise you live cast this evening, giving you updates on what's going on. We then continued on to the park. A bicycle path that we're using right now, and it gives opportunity spots to give yourself uh, safety, cover, and the ability to not be out in the open. Yeah, this will do. Not long after Jason laid out his sleeping bag, we were spotted by security. Mm. And this is a constant aspect that you try to avoid but you always prep for it. And you always have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, so on and so forth. It is what it is, and it actually captured an element that these people are suffering from, which is constantly being harassed and moved. Four days later, we met up again with Jason. We left you on Friday. Mm -hmm. It's now Tuesday. In about four days, have you been doing this past four days? It was, with the weather, it was difficult. Um, been able to get out of the community, speak with people. Mm -hmm. um, get their stories. Mm -hmm. He said he was mostly tired and thought he might be getting the flu. Like people complain that they only get six hours of sleep a night or what have you. In the 13 days that I've done this, I've maybe averaged two and a half hours a night and I'm somehow still functioning. I don't know. Okay. To get a better understanding of what services there are for the homeless, Jason wanted to check out Loaves and Fishes near downtown Sacramento. The executive director, Noel Cameron, showed us around. If Jason here were to come and right now just walk into Loaves and Fishes, what would you guys be able to help him out with or offer? Well, first thing is folks come to, uh, they'll go to Friendship Park, get a lunch ticket, and uh, make sure they uh, get themselves ready to go so that uh, once we're serving lunch, they can get a nice hot meal. And we load folks up pretty good, so we make sure that everyone comes away with a full belly. So back here, this is our kennel. Uh, we've got a bike repair station in here. It's great that you're doing it, but at the same token, it's there's still a larger problem. As Jason's learned, that larger problem stems from issues like a lack of affordable housing, mental illness, and drugs as is the case for Tyler, a homeless man we later ran into who praised Jason for what he's doing and dared others to do the same. Do it for five days, I dare you, and see the daily discrimination. Tyler told Jason he's currently seeking treatment for an opioid addiction. I'm in recovery and I'm on the streets. 
That is something that many of us cannot relate to, but it served as a reminder and ammunition to Jason to keep doing what he's doing. Wow, I didn't know it was like this, so maybe I need to look into this more. They start talking to people, so on and so forth, that it has almost like a virus effect, you know, it, it spreads. And that's what I'm hoping for. I want this message to get out so that people realize that this is right underneath their nose and they shouldn't be okay with it. He is still out there right now. Tonight, he is sleeping out in the cold. Mm, have you had a chance to check in with him? How he's, how's he, he doing? I checked in with him today. I mean, his phone is on and off, but he, he is still tired, but he's still at it. He said he knows it's radical. He knows this is insane, mm -hmm. but he said you got to do something this extreme to make change. He needs to bring awareness to this. He wants to, he's trying to set up meetings with lawmakers, get other people to call lawmakers and, and make change and bring awareness to this issue. Okay. All right. It is something we're going to be following. It's one thing to talk about the issues. It's another to actually go out and do it. Okay? Absolutely. All right. Well,